starting this video, we're over here at Epic BMX meeting up with the one and only Foo Voo. I see a lot of things that aren't correctly done that kids do, men do, everybody does wrong on their bikes. One of them is installing pegs. I'm not a very good explainer on stuff. I'm just not a very good speaker like that. And Foo is the best at it and Alfredo Mancuso, but we're gonna have them explain exactly how to properly install your pegs and maybe a couple other things. That's stupid, look at the slider. All you're gonna taste is the fucking meat. Gordon Ramsay, you're chopped. You're out! I'm your nightmare kitchen. So I guess today, Mr. Richter needs some content and he wants to do something about pegs. So let's talk about pegs. Pegs come in a different variety. Old school peg, knurling for stand up. Can't grind on this stuff, you're gonna eat shit. Metal. Plastic. The plastic one, of course, is not all plastic. There is a sleeve on the inside. There's a metal peg inside and a sleeve. Why did they do this? If you're gonna slide on a dry ledge, concrete ledge with a metal coping, you're gonna need some dental work. The bike's gonna stop as soon as it hits that. So they put plastic on there to make it slide a lot, lot better. Also, plastic peg, park skate park safe, uh, friendly when it hit it doesn't bite into the wood and oh, I don't know I what I what, what do I prefer I prefer plastic because it slides better but definitely for some of you guys metal sounds so much better when you're grinding and then if you're riding a skate park a lot and they don't care about the plastic the metal peg on the metal coping slides a lot better than plastic on coping true or false somebody comment on that is there a difference because I've noticed some pegs have aluminum inner core and a chromoly inner core. Is there a difference so, with that? So yeah, you're right. The core is aluminum. This one here is steel. Uh, the aluminum one is, this demolition one is aluminum. Then you got the sleeper, Ethan Corrier one, it's steel. The way you can tell if it's steel is if you look at it, you see the, the sleeve inside, it's thinner. Look at that sleeve. Look how thick it is. That's aluminum. And the reason for that, they do aluminum because it's lightweight. So then you might go, well, I want, why would you want to make it out of steel because it's heavier? Well, I wish we had Ethan here because Ethan could explain it really good. With the steel, it doesn't dent. Despite that there's a plastic around it, the plastic itself, it's malleable. Look, it bends. So if you're going from like gap so like double peg, when your peg hits it, it's going to put little dents in it. When's it when it put a little dent in it, it's not gonna, when, when you're ready to replace it, it won't slide out clean. It's super hard because there's dents in it. And then after a while, the ends close up because it dents so much and you can't put a socket in it. Well, the steel one does all that also, but a lot, lot harder to do it to. So it lasts a lot longer. You take your pick. If you're not a guy that likes to do like heavy grinds, doing big grind, big drop to double peg, Get aluminum. If I wanted to try the aluminum peg, is that okay too? If I want to take the plastic off? Yeah, yeah, because Tree, there was a company called Tree, and they did aluminum pegs. The aluminum pegs would grind on metal on metal, pretty decent, but not on concrete. You're going to destroy that. So not a lot of people ride on aluminum pegs. A lot of flatlanders ride aluminum pegs because they're not grinding on it. They're standing on it. So they want the bike to be light. If you're the one of those guys that like to go hard on that, get steel. With the steel ones, if you're kind of like overriding the plastic, you just take the plastic off and then you can just ride the steel peg. Oh, uh, no, you can't. No? Because you see it has a little lip. Yeah. Oh. That little lip, when it goes inside, it's flush. So, good thing you said that because... The I don't think anybody has it anymore. Demolition used to make a peg. But what Demolition did was it, every peg, almost every uh, plastic sleeve pegs have that little lip so what they do is they give you this little extra washer and you put it right over it and then it would accommodate for the um the lip see they make it flush and you mount it to the the fork or the dropout but i don't know i guess, I guess they change it the example you're just showing they don't come like this right now that you know of no you know what As, like i'm looking at it right now and it doesn't look like it i mean that's why that's why their pace was called the bipolar. 
because you can run the pegs two different ways. So they might have changed it. I'm not sure. Um, I'll follow up. I'll follow up and I'll ask them. My, my peg stash. So e did one that is plastic, but what they did was they encased it. The whole the, the sleeve doesn't come out. So basically the, the metal's inside and then they encase the whole thing in plastic. Pretty cool concept, but the downside from this is that once you grind through, this thing's trash. You can't run, s slide the sleeve in it. And it was really expensive. I think this peg was like almost $40 piece. If I'm correct, Hoffman was one of the first ones to do a plastic like, peg. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I could swear Hoffman was the first one. Matt Hoffman, dude, always innovating. And then after that, uh, I remember when uh, Alfredo rode for KHE and uh, these pegs were introduced to. It was an entirely plastic peg. There's no sleeve, no nothing. It's pretty lightweight. It weighs next to nothing. Uh, but the downside from this thing is that because there's no reinforcement, if you if you hit it real hard, it'll, it'll just snap off. It'll just shatter. G-Sport came out with their plague. You remember plague? Yep. So plague, plastic, peg, plague. Like many pegged sleeve that's inside it that's only about that long and the rest is plastic I thought that's a pretty cool concept because when you grind it won't it won't get that thing I was telling you guys about where the ends the ends fold in so it just grinded off so I don't know why they discontinue that so hey if G Sports watching hey G Sport chime in and, and tell us why did you stop that because I personally thought that was a great idea plastic pegs came came a long way there's like history upon history and then the other thing we could talk about is if you look at it the length. Yeah, there you go. You're paying attention. Different length. I think Merritt was one of the first one to do the longest plastic peg. It was the, the vegan one. It's 4.75. That's long, dude. But being it longer, you're going to lock on a lot of tricks better. If you do crook, it'll lock on. It's more forgiving because you could, you, you could do big gaps, 180s, 360 on double peg, whatever. And you have that little bit extra length. To accommodate for it to catch on but keep in mind that if it's a little bit longer you're gonna have a better chance of clipping the rail when you come in on and off so there's pros and cons about it now I think there was talk about your pegs your pegs actually as a matter of fact oh can we still say it's your peg no it's not my peg anymore. well it is my peg but okay yeah. so look at how long these pegs are the they're, peg I designed 4.75 Rumor has it that it was supposed to be 5 inch. Yeah, I want to do a 5 inch peg. But then why did you change it to 475? I don't know. I kind of wanted to... I don't really remember the whole history I of it. I remember we were making fun of you and, you, and, you, and you're like, okay, fine, I'll just do 475. Yeah, because yeah, I, thought, I thought the vegan was 4, uh, 4. Oh, yeah. 420. All right, I'm going to go longer to have the longest peg in 4.75. And that was it. And then I also kind of want to do like a 5 inch peg too. So I wanted to have a 4.75 and a 5 inch one. Yeah. Well, well, you know what? I, I think the five inch one would would have sold anyway. But I didn't. I would let's forget. Let's not forget. I don't think I I would even invented the five inch peg because Snafu did a five inch peg, right? No, 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 no. We're talking about plastic pegs. Oh, but Snafu did a five inch Snaf peg, right? Dude, there was a six inch metal peg. Okay. Snafu never did a, a six inch plastic peg. Okay. Okay. They never did a six inch plastic peg. They did a a five inch. And back then, back in the crazy peg era, they have like long ass pegs. I think Matt Hoffman, again, just an innovator. I think he was messing around or something. Is is either him or Mr. Wilkinson, Ron Wilkinson. He was messing around. He made like a foot-long peg just to mess around with. So pegs come in different length. Now, I get a lot of kids asking me, well, what length do I need? If you're first learning how to grind, you're first getting on pegs, get long pegs. Because then, then it's easier to lock on. Once you get better and better, you, then you could adjust according to what you want. Like you got Mr. Eric L, he doesn't even use pegs, he just used uh, axles. Hey, let's say I had a dad or a mom that are uh, fabricators. Would they be able to cut one of these pegs up to make a short one? Of course. Would it weaken it or anything? No, no, and that's what, that's what I used to do to Max's pegs. You, use your common sense. What I recommend is longer pegs if you're just starting, but if you feel like you want to go that route and you got a lot of commitment, cut your pegs down. Make it shorter so it, it forces you to do that. But, yes. Or you buy a short peg. But, but, yeah, if you want to cut it, real simple. You can either put a hacksaw on it and saw, saw it off. Or you can put it on like a, like, like, a, like a cutoff saw, a grinder, whatever, and cut it right off. Easy. Could you put a pipe cutter on there? If your pipe cutter is big enough and, and the blade's big enough, it'll cut through the plastic. Yes. 
So you can cut it to whatever length you want. So like here, maybe somebody wanted to support their favorite writer. You know, maybe somebody wanted to go, you know what, I like Ethan. I like Ethan. I like the logo. You know, it's cool, but, you know, I wish they'd make shorter ones. They do make shorter. They make four and a half, four and a quarter. But what if you want four? That's fine, dude. Just put, a, put on a saw and cut it off. Put on a bandsaw. Put on a hacksaw. So now we're going to talk about installing some pegs. Some people might think, you know what, installing some pegs? I mean, how hard can installing peg be? You know what, you're right, it's not hard. But there's a couple of little tricks that people always messed up on. He's got female axles. Is there any difference with male axle? Of course it does, because when you put it on, look, when you take it off, you, so now it's off, look, there's nothing there. So what, you're just going to put a peg on? You know, it's, it's, no. For some of you guys that have a male axle, and it's on, and you just put this in. That's it. So on a female axle, it's a little bit more difficult. What do you do? It's a female axle. So real simple. Here's the female bolt. You put it in there first. Feed it through. And you slide and you screw it on. Now, if you guys notice, how this, how the peg, I wanted the peg to sit flush onto the dropout. So you guys are sitting there going, okay, so what? Like, I know that. No, but to your surprise, a lot of people do this part wrong. When you remove a wheel, what do you notice? There's a washer right there. The bolt goes in and the washer sits right there up against the frame. Well, when you, re when you put on a peg, Essentially, you know what you're doing. This washer gets replaced with the peg. You normally sit like this with this when you close it. So when you get this out, you gotta take this out and put this in. Put this in because the peg is acting as the washer. Now, some people are gonna sit there and argue, going, "You know what? It doesn't hurt." You're right. You can leave that in because when you turn it. Sometimes it won't rotate the whole peg, but that's on the inside. What you don't want to do is you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this and this. If you leave the washer there, that's what's going to happen. Now, again, some of you might think, you know what, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. That little space, it's going to give this thing room to move. And every single time you hit, it's going to move, it's going to move, it's going to move, it's going to bend the axle because it's not sitting flush. Everything you want, you want it to be tight, you don't want it to be a little loose. Even if I lock this thing down tight, but because there's room for it to move, every time you hit, it's just, it'll move a little bit, it'll bend your axle. So you don't want that. Remove that. Common mistake, some of you guys that do it, don't feel bad, don't feel, because majority of the people, they do that. Even if there's been shops, there's been shops that does that, they don't know. That's why you want to go to a BMX shop. You don't want to just go to a bicycle shop because they don't ride BMX, so they don't understand, you know? So go to a BMX shop. You want BMX done, done right. Remove this. Don't have anything there. You're going to screw it in. Make sure that's lined. Go in. Look at that. No space. Smooth. There's no room. There's no room for it to move. It's, it's flush. Now that you got it flush, no washer, no nothing, you want to lock it down. Sometimes it's snug, but because it's plastic, plastic compress a little, give it another little, little nudge, and you're good, solid. So now we got the front. The front is a little bit different. It's very similar to the back. It's a little di different. There's a, there's a couple little components that people usually miss. So I'll show you. You notice the front, the axle is a little bit smaller. Okay. What size is it? It's a uh, three eighths. But if you notice the peg, so what do we do? So if you notice every single time you buy a peg, you guys gotta be careful. They come in this little tiny ring. It's inside here, the packaging. So you gotta take it out. Take that little ring. It's a reducer. This is called a reducer. Slide it over this, now it becomes a 14. Now it slides over, look, it doesn't move. This is what you guys need. If you guys have a, a male axle, all you do is slide this over. 
then take this, slide this over, and then that's it. You bolt it up. But you have to have that in there. I see a lot of you guys coming in here, and this thing's like this. When it's moving like this, you're going you're gonna to strip this. It's going to bend the axle. Look at this. It moves around. So let's slide that on. Slide this. Make sure it's pressed in. Because sometimes if you don't do that and it's, it, falls, it falls off inside, it's not going to go. So you have to push this thing in. Pull the peg back while you're pushing this forward so that little ring doesn't fall off. And remember, what you guys, do you guys notice? What's not in here? The spacer. You don't have the spacer in there. You, you want to remove the spacer. And some pegs come with different type of spacers. Yeah. And never make sure, always make sure it's inside the peg, not outside. Conclusion, guys. Look at that. At first, Nate hit me up and go, hey, let's do a how-to about pegs. And even me, myself, Nate, my apology. I was like, Nate, this is going to be a, like a one-minute video. How, how hard can it be? But as we get into it, you can see it's actually pretty. There's a lot of stuff you need to know about pegs. So remember, guys, it's simple, but it's also complex. Make sure the key thing is you don't want that little washer inside between. And if the front end, if it's a 3 8 axle, you want to put that little tiny ring in there. And every peg you buy comes with that little ring. And never on the outside. It needs to be flush with the fork. Flush. And if you go to a shop and the shop doesn't know what they're talking about, maybe you need to find yourself a more solid shop. Flush with the fork. Always, always, always. No, no spacer out. Always in. You know, hey, hey, you know, you, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Yeah. There's going to be probably a lot of other shops that's going to watch this go, oh, okay, now we know how to do this. So you know what? You other shops, give me a shout out because you know I'm helping you guys too.